Hello guys and welcome to another map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at a map called Germantown version 1.1 and you can find this map over at the fsuk.com website and there will be a description or there will be a link to the uh, map in the description below. So this map is a four times map so it's a 4x it's a 4x map so it's larger than the normal Goldcrest Valley uh, map. And uh, let me read you a bit of the description uh, before we jump in. So the author says, uh, now here's what you will find on Germantown. A forex map with all of the crops of the vanilla game. Uh, 148 fields ranging from 0.33 hectares to 62 hectares, totaling roughly 820 hectares of workable farm. Uh, there's three main farms with silos and plenty of space for placeables with sheep, pigs, and cows at each. <clears throat> Loads of extra flat spaces scattered throughout the map for placeables that are marked on the PDA. Biodiesel plant built using the fabric script takes canola and produces fuel, forage, and digestate. Fuel can be used in all vehicles loaded into the fuel bowsers are sold at the fuel cell point. Uh, there are 12 cell points including the BGA, spinnery, and biodiesel. Multiple storage silos. Multiple silos can be expanded. Uh, there's a dynamic tra traffic system with speed ranging from 30 kilometers to 60 kilometers an hour. Uh, this map is seasons mod ready with custom seasonal temperatures built in. There is a single rail line that circumnavigates the map, and uh, gold nuggets are on this map. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and jump on in. So I will be picking a different vehicle for our map tour. I will be using this Jeep that I just found. I like this Jeep because it's an open top, and it's faster than the John Deere Gator, uh, which is key on these 4X size maps. Uh, let me pull up the log. Uh, I was a little slow in pulling up the log, but we will scroll up and take a look at that. As you can see, we start with a very large amount of starting equipment. And basically, that's the log right there. So there's a clean log. The map loads very quickly. So here's our starting point. So we can see we have chickens right out the right off from our main house here. Let's take a look at the map. So the uh, description said that there are 148 fields, and uh, you can see that they are all over the place in all of various shapes and sizes. Let's uh, take a look and see if we can identify all of the fields that we own. We own a fair number of fields scattered around the map. Uh, let's start at the top. We own field 95, field 64, 59, 11, 9, 119, 5, 122, 8, 6, 7, 18, 16, 17, 31, 32, 83, 85, uh, 35, 23, 24, 26, 28, and uh, that might be it. So I'm not really sure how many fields there are there that you own, uh, but it's a fair number. And as you can see, the, the fields range very, very much uh, in different sizes from little old field 3 right here to big old field 88 down here. And um, another interesting thing is there doesn't really seem to be a rhyme or reason to how these are numbered. Uh, you know, we start here kind of kind of by the farm with number one, but right next to it is 122. Right next to three and four is field 51. 
So it's a little confusing as to really the numbering scheme. It's almost as if as fields were made, they were numbered and they weren't necessarily made in any any real order. So it's a little difficult to, uh, to understand how they were numbered there. So the map has our standard crop types. <clears throat> I do these map videos on hard mode. So on hard mode, you start with zero crops in the silos. And uh, like I said, you start with a fair bit of equipment here, all very new, so the maintenance will be low, but you still have a lot of equipment. Let's take out a loan so we can buy some animals as we drive around. Okay. And speaking of animals, we start with zero animals uh, at the start of the map, and all of the feed troughs and water troughs and whatnot are empty. Uh, our silo has a capacity of 100,000 liters, uh, but as was mentioned in the description, there are multiple silos all around the map uh, for storing product. So let's go back to the map. Now it's not the greatest of color schemes here, uh, but it's let's see if we can pull up here. So there's a bit of a legend here. P equals silage pit. B is the biodiesel plant. D is a dairy plant. E is an elevator. Um, I don't know what that is. Let's see if we can get rid of this. S is for silo. And F is for flat area. So flat areas basically are places for your placeables. So we have an F and an S here. We have an F there, a P there, which is silage pit. So around our farm, we have some F's here. There's a bunch of F's there. Okay, there's our D. There's our dairy down by field 144. Uh, the white line is the, tra the train line. Okay. So we are going to, uh, let's look and see if we can find the store here. So the shop is way down here. All right, so let's visit the shop, and let's purchase. Let's let's look at our starting equipment. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So we start with three tractors, ranging in horsepower from 125 up to 300 or 263 horsepower. Uh, we start with front loading arms, a bucket, and a pallet fork. We start with a Decent size Case IH Harvester, the 7130, with both corn and grain headers. Uh, we start with the Rosal Smash uh, Forage Harvester with three different headers. I believe this one picks up grass and hay. This one cuts uh, your standard crops as well as grass. And uh, this one is obviously just for corn. We have a corn header. Uh, we have a, the small... Um, sh sugar beet harvester we have three ranging or three tippers ranging in size from 15,000 liters to 40,000 liters uh, we have a cultivator here and this cultivator could be also hooked up to the uh, Zune hammer um, slurry spreader or a slurry tank we have two plows uh, assortment of planters an uh, assortment of fertilized spreader and sprayer. Here we have the Joskin um, slurry spreader. Some weights. We have the side slung mower, the Pottinger side mower, and the Pottinger front mower. And then we have a rake, tether, and bale wagon. Uh, we have a auto load bale wagon. And a, um, I guess this is the square baler. Uh, we have our pickup truck, we have a leveler, uh, we have the fuel bowser, that's interesting. <clears throat> Lots of maps don't include a fuel bowser uh, with you, but so we've got that. We've got uh, pressure washer, a workshop, and some building sheds, and um, nothing is leased. So let's buy up our Jeep, and uh, we're going to go with green. Uh, we're going to make this white. And we're going to go with design two. 
Okay. So where is our Jeep? All right, there's our Jeep. So we're going to reset this thing and see where it goes. Reset. All right. So it's definitely not at the shop. Let's see if we can find it. All right. Well, that's interesting. It resets back here between field 6 and 8. And we know that our chickens are up there, so that's our start point. So let's go ahead and uh, get on in here, and let's drive on up um, to our chickens, and we'll start the tour again from there. All right. So this is where we started. Here we have our chicky chickens. There's a nugget, just as uh, as we were promised. So let's take a look around the 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 farm. So here's our vehicle customization shop uh, that we saw we had a placeable of. Uh, there's our water power washer and our fuel Bowser. There's another nugget. So here we have our silo tip in, and our tip out is right there. And uh, over here we have a fair bit of our starting equipment under these this shed here. And as you can see over here, we have a fair number of starting pallets, liquid fertilizer, solid fertilizer, and seed. So we are not hurting for starting um, seed and fertilizer. And uh, there's our bale trailer. Got a couple of storage buildings here, and let's take a look and see what's on the other side of this. There's our bucket. All right, so here's some more of our equipment, uh, and that's pretty much the main farm, all right here in this little area. So let's just uh, run up here, and we've got uh, sheep across the street here. So let's go ahead and check them out. Uh, we do have another storage building right there. So as you can see, we have traffic going both directions on this map. So here's our sheep area. Let's buy up some sheep. There's another nugget. This is where your wool spawns, I believe. And then we have our food, our grass, and our water troughs. Oh, those are just grass troughs. Let's see if we can find our water trough. There's our water trough right here for our sheep. And our sheep have a fairly big area to uh, roam around in. Um, so that's our sheep area. So before we really start exploring the map, I want to do something I typically do at the very end. And that is I want to jump in the train. Um, because I did this when I was looking at this map uh, the first time and I really thought that uh, this train tour really helped um, lay out a bit of the map so you can see right there the texture of the uh, I'm pretty sure the texture of the the trees right there um, I'm not, we'll have to check that out when we are doing our tour, but I think that is dirt, as in uh, plow that up and make it into a field. I don't think that's necessarily forest floor and then grass on top of that. Um, I think you can make those fields. We'll have to check that out. Uh, but what I really liked about this map, and uh, 
also let me note that the Union Pacific train is not a part of the map. Uh, I have changed the default train to be skinned that way uh, for a Let's Play series that I do. So you will not get that train skin uh, with the map. So with that said, uh, I really like the way this train, for example, is kind of cut into the, the land here. Where, you know, it's very realistic, very believable um, that that's, uh, the train would have, the train people would have carved out um, that rise just to make it flatter for the train to go through. And I found a, a lot of the landscaping or the, um, the geography, the lay of the land, if you will, on this map to be very believable uh, and very nicely done. So here we've got some, some you know, ridges and uh, that have been carved out. Uh, we've got the train kind of running on an elevated platform with respect to the fields there. We've got a fairly nice um, sloping curve going on here. Um, here you can see the train tracks are elevated above the field, but in other cases you'll see the train tracks are, you know, recessed into the uh, below grade, if you will. So off to our left is the side of the map. That's the edge of the map. Here we have some fields. Uh, these are not fields that we own, but they are just some random fields on the map. Looks like there's a silo way back there in the background. So here's another case where the, uh, you know, the train has been carved through the uh, the ridge very believable I like that very much on this map uh, when I was looking at this I really felt that uh, this very much felt real life um, just by the way things were just kind of generally laid around you know, the way the, the fields were not square not uh, they were not um, either running north, south, or east or west. You know, field 35, which is right here, this planted field right here is field 35. That's a field that we own. Uh, when you look at the map, we know north is to the top, south is to the bottom, and uh, east and west are obviously um, right and left. But uh, field 35 is at an angle, so it's it's positioned cattywankus if you will um, running north and south you're going to be kind of running at an angle running east and west you're going to be running at an angle so if you're going to run it um, truly um, the length ways you're going to be running at an angle um, so it's going to be you know that would be an interesting field lots of these fields would be interesting with hired workers uh, because hired workers want to run either north south or east or west typically or they want to run on a 45 degree angle. Course play likes to run north, south, east, or west. So off to the side here, this is our cow area. We're going to take a look at that in a bit. Uh, but that's our cow area. Another thing I really liked about the map was there were lots of times that the train line and the road system uh, ran parallel to each other. And that, uh, that really just seems, seems right, seems believable seems realistic so right here by field 44 is the dairy uh, remember we saw that on the map it's marked in the little map as a D so that's the dairy there we'll have to see if we can find a uh, milk cell point there for the dairy when we're when we're going around There's one of our cell points. And it looks like that's a factory. That's uh, B. B is biodiesel. So that is the biodiesel plant down there, guys. We'll definitely have to check that out because that's not the standard um, biodiesel placeable that we see. So that's a custom biodiesel plant. There is our sugar beet factory or sugar beet cell point. So 
So like I said, I really felt that this rail line made the map just feel more more real. It just it just really felt right um, riding around the train here. Um, here we have a bit of a town with uh, a bit of a fair number of cell points. And over here we have a silo and a big shed and place for some placeables to support your farming operations on this area of the map. And then off here to our left is our big field. That's big field 88. That's the 62 hectare field uh, that was talked about in the description. And uh, field 86 and 87 do not... Uh, they're no slackers either by their own right. There's wonderful tree lines there lining the fields. Really get the sense that this map just feels right as far as being a, a realistic area and not something that was just, uh, you know, dreamt up. So we're coming around. Uh, we started we started our map tour up there around Germantown, so we're we're coming around to the uh, we're coming around to the end of the train line. As you can see, it takes a while to circumnavigate this map at full train speeds because it is a 4x map. Really nice skyline over there with respect to the uh, the edge of the map over there. And the fields are flat-ish. Uh, they're not completely flat. They do seem to have a bit of a little rolling to them. Uh, but they're not, you know, they're not uh, crazy whack out with uh, with elevation changes either. Got a bit of a climb for the train. Another bridge. This would be a really cool map to have the uh, the train running all the time on. Until you went to try to find the train to uh, to do a cell point, then it would get a bit uh, probably a bit annoying when you find that the train is way on the other side of the map and you got to wait for it. Snaking around the countryside here. Not a lot to see off to our left because that is the edge of the map. So we'll just kind of focus on this kind of an angle for now. So I did see that the uh, the AI cars kind of morphed through the train. So that's that's kind of a knock. Um, we've seen maps where they've made the AI cars stop for trains. So that would have been that would have been nice to see. So we're coming up on field 94. That's a field we own. Uh, this planted field here. It's probably in corn. So that's the field that we own. And this biogas looking like plant up here is not a true biogas facility. They only buy um, liquid manure. They only buy slurry. So they don't give you digestate or anything. There's just a sell point for slurry. All right, so that basically, we're just going to wrap up here. This is pretty much where we, uh, this is pretty much where we jumped on the train at. So we're going to leave the train here. 
and uh, we're going to run over here and check out our pig facility since we are so close to it. And on a 4x map, close is relative, isn't it? Let's see if we can. Should good. We can jump the hedge there. All right. So here we have our pig facility. So on the other side of our pig facility, we have this nice um, placeable area, nice flat area where we could uh, put buildings and sheds or other things. We've got a two sh couple um, covering sheds there. We have a silo here just across the street from our pig area. And we have, uh, interesting enough, we have a BGA or a, a silage bunker over here at our pig area. So here we have our pretty much standard farm sim 17 pig area with water. straw, liquid manure, solid manure, here's our buy point, and here is our feed trough. Pretty standard, everything where you expect it to be for Farm Sim 17, it's default pig area. Alright, so Let's take a look at this um, field here. Let's just check out, see if there's missions. So there are missions. Uh, this field is 4.29 hectares at $152,000. That is field six. Okay, so let's jump back into our Jeep. Wish our Jeep had working mirrors. That's the only real knock on this thing. I uh, wish I could take the uh, the windscreen down. That would be cool. Uh, but other than that, we've got wonderful sight lines all the way around the vehicle um, to explore this wonderful looking map. So let's start. Where shall we start, guys? Let's let's I guess no no better way to start than to just get out here and just start driving around and. Um, Let's just go counterclockwise and see how that gets us. Let's go drop this down to the little mini map. So this looks like so here we have a chicken or an egg buy point. Um, we have a little bit of a placeable area here. And uh, then we have this area here, which on the map is identified, I've got to zoom in here, as an F, and F is, F is for flat area. All right, so here we have a bit of a, a flat area or placeable area uh, for you to put some structures down if you want, fairly close to the, uh, the main farm. So let's uh, there's go on up here and let's take a left at our next intersection. And you see a nice little rolling f hill there on a field. And there should be a road right up here. Did I miss it? Oh, I got a few strand errant. There it is. So I did kind of miss the road. So we have a nice road that's intermixed with, you know, laid with grass. Let's see here. Let's see the road kind of disappears. I really like this. Look how the road disappears. So it's there, right there, you know, you get off the road, it's, it's, you can see there's some tire paths, some dirt paths, and then it just goes away. Where'd it go? Well, if you just keep going, 
it'll eventually come back. You know, but uh, that's a nice touch. It's a nice aesthetic touch, I think, to the map. Um, in theory, you could you could cut all these trees down and mow this whole area. And uh, no, that that does look like it's uh, forest floor. I thought that was a um, you know, like when you plant grass on a field, it's kind of got that spotty looking texture to it. That's what I was kind of thinking all of this area was. So let's, uh, let's make a right here and go up to our next intersection and make a left and we'll get up here to these the, the something dairy farm and the Euro Goodies Mill. And uh, we'll check those out. our road so while we're gone let's check these just just check some scenes out it's a couple nice fields so up here we have a flat area for placeable and we have a farm silo uh, for storing crops so you could make this a uh, a farm if you will you could put um, up buildings and everything and just make this a a farm operations for this area of the map if you wanted to so up here we have a train only cell point to uh, take a look at that all right so now it has an icon as as if it's train only but then there's this that doesn't have any box associated with it whereas this one does you can see the you can see the box there on the ground so this part of the building is purely decorative this does not do a darn thing okay like how this part of the building is elevated. It's very, very nice. Very nicely done. Let's go up here and check out this other cell point. It looks like we have a hay barn up here. So it looks like this is our hay, straw, and grass cell point. Uh, these silos appear to just simply be decoration. And it looks like we also can sell manure and possibly digestate, or is this just decoration? A nugget? So these piles are just, uh, these are just decoration. There's nothing there. So that's all this area up here is. This is the, your hay, straw, and grass cell point. All right. Let's head on down. Figure out where we want to go next. Let's keep, uh, keep following this road down to Paul's Junction. And uh, once we hook up there, we'll go down to Bell's Hog Farm, uh, the Tree LT Lim Lumber. And uh, then we'll hook up to the, the cow area.
So I like how these roads are not flat. Um, they've got little, little hills, little dips in them. Very, very nicely done. I know how it is in the editor. Well, I messed with trying to do a map of one time, and uh, you know, I was greatly lost with respect to elevation changes and trying to not have little mini mountains all over the place or mini holes in the ground. Um, so I think anyone that can really sculpt the land has really got a very good artistic touch uh, with respect to uh, the editor. Let's go over here and check out what's over here. There's just so much on this map, so many little details, I think. So again, we have just some silos, just some decorative silos. But it does look like we have a storage sheds here, so we could store equipment up here if we wanted. All right, let's uh, figure out where we're going. It looks like we can uh, follow this road around to the hog farm, Bell Hog Farm. So let's just do that. Really have good sight lines on this map from the uh, first person's per perspective. All right, so here is our Bell's Hog Farm. This is a cell point. So here's our cell point, and then across the way, uh, we've got this nice flat area. Again, marked on the map as a flat area uh, with some storage sheds, storage structures already built in. Now I have to say that these, uh, this flat area is not that flat um, as you can see by me driving around. It's got some little bumps here to it but still uh, there's a nice flat area or flat-ish area uh, to put structures if you want. So let's see. Alright, let's uh, make our way on down here. So this structure up here to the right, I'm guessing that it is a train um, grain transfer station because it's not marked on the map as anything. And that's indeed what it looks like it is. So here you can tip out, here you can tip in, and the train tracks are right there uh, where you can fill up. So that's indeed what that building is. So let's, uh, hmm. We're up here on an elevated track now. We're going to have to see if this, uh, this elevation drops off. Actually, I know it, it's okay because the entry to the cow area crosses these tracks, so we're good. All right, so here's the cow area. up here. So we have this big area carved out of the land. Look how it's just been carved out of the the bank here for placeable buildings. We've got two long um, silage bunkers kind of in line with each other. And then we've got a big storage shed up here. And then our cow area is really massive. Let's take a look at this. So here we have a grass trough, okay? And uh, let's run up here on top of this little hill. So our cow area is fenced in with these hedges. So you can see the hedges go off in the distance. They disappear probably because they go down over a, a fall in the ground. Here we've got some hedges. Alright, and look, we got hedges way out there. So this is a massive cow area, perfect for a huge herd of cattle. Excellent for a huge herd of cattle. Let's see if we can uh, jump these. Good. 
So we come down to this level. We have our solid and liquid manure. Um, let's buy our cows. Let's just load up. We've already bought our pigs and sheep, so we might as well spend all our money on cows. So here's what I call our silage, our power food um, feeding trough. And then we have our water trough right here. These are different hedges that we normally see. These are kind of like evergreen hedges. So we can just walk through those. So look at this cow area, everybody. This is massive. It's very nice. I love it. I really like how the ground just rolls here. How the, this cow barn is recessed from the area up there. And this area itself is recessed. Our, this area itself is at a lower level um, than those fields up there, which are raised. So that's really nice. So this is one of those this is one of those diamonds in the rough that uh, that are sitting out there waiting for people to play that I don't think a lot of people know about. It's really a great map. Then once again, our road just ends here. Very artistically done, I think, uh, with respect to that. Oh, and then our road picks back up again. Very, very nice. So we're coming around here because we've got a couple things. Uh, we've got a B marked on the map. And I don't really remember what a B is. We'll have to uh, let's check our legend. B is the biodiesel. Oh yeah, okay, I remember now. So we're coming up on our biodiesel plant that I wanted to check out. So this is the biodiesel plant up here on our left. Uh, this is the area that takes canola and makes forage, um, what is it, forage, digestate, and fuel. So this is different than the um, than the placeable mod or the gener the the mod that you can put in with GE. It's laid out a little bit different. So we've got our tip in for our canola. We've got these silos here to store our canola. Very nice. We've got these silos to store our forage. Very attractive. Uh, this is where our diesel or biodiesel comes out. And I suspect around the corner here. This is where our digestate comes out. So this is a very nice structure. Very nicely done. Very attractive. Um, I mean, personally, I think the biodiesel plant that's a placeable is a bit of an eyesore. It's kind of an ugly thing. It's green. I don't really, I'm not really a big fan of green myself. The, the silo that is here for the forage is kind of a, a rust bucket looking of a silo. So I like this uh, iteration. And there's your, uh, there's your information screens. So let's jump in our Jeep and jo go check out the dairy, which is right up the street. Now what would be really cool is if the train had a, um, a tanker car and you could pull up to the biodiesel plant off the train line and fill up a tank car with fuel and then take that to a cell point or to a um, to an area where you could offload to some semi trailers that would be really cool alright so here's our dairy and like the oh, watch that just a bit of a bump there unlike the biodiesel plant which was elevated off the main road our dairy is, is kind of recessed. Again, playing with the uh, the elevations. Things aren't perfectly flat in the world, so why should they be perfectly flat in um, in our farm sim play, right? So I'm just looking around here for a, uh, a possible milk fill trigger. Haven't really found one yet. So oh, there's a nugget. Halfway to 10. 
So this may just be a structure. It may not be anything. Um, meaning that if you want to make this a milk cell point, you'd have to put uh, put the trigger in. Not that big of a deal. But it doesn't look like to me that the trigger is included in the map. Let's take a look around the corner here. I'm not seeing any there. Not seeing anything there. All right, so I'm just going to say that this structure is purely decorational at this point, uh, but would be a great area to put in a milk cell point if you wanted to. So let's see where we are. Here was, let's go up here and check out Liz, Ga Liz Gaz. Let's see if we can get to there from here. I right, see it over there. Can we get to it from here? Liz Gas is our BGA. Looks like we can. Alright, so let's uh, pull on in here. So here's our BGA, pretty standard Farm Sim 17 BGA. Goldcrest Valley, this would be where we would enter. Uh, we would come in through here and have the ability to drive up into our scales. And our Silo King would be there. And here's our bunkers. And there is our Digestate. So this is the basic Farm Sim 17 BGA. Uh, it's just the entrance has been kind of flipped around on us. So the entrance is there instead of uh, the other side. And, uh, oh, look at this. I did not see this the first time I went through this map. We've got more, watch out for that. We've got more bunkers um, over here for silage. So you could seriously have um, some, so several silage bunkers operating at the same time. And it interconnects. Very nice. Very nice. That's something I did not notice the first time around. Oh, and that is not the way out of the BGA. Let's find our way back to the road. Good thing I'm in a Jeep, huh? All right, so let's check and figure out where we are now. All right, so let's go along this road and then make our way south. This, there's a fair number of cell points to the south. So guys, let me know in the comments, what do you think of this map in general? Do you like this map? Um, do you like big maps? Okay, we've got uh, field 32. This is a field we own and it's all grass. Excellent, this is a massive grass field right by our BGA. Very, very nice. So let me know. What do you think? Uh, do you all like large maps? Um, do you like smaller maps? Do you like 1x maps, 4x maps, maps that are kind of like mini maps? Uh, do you like maps that have a bunch of industry in them? Here we have some more. Uh, there's a silo, silage bunker right there. Let's see here. We want to we want to make our way south. So here we have kind of like a, an interstate. Uh, this traffic is going a bit quicker than the other traffic, I believe. At 39 miles an hour. So let me know what kind of maps you all like. What is this over here? Uh, these buildings, does this do anything? Uh, there's no triggers, so this is just a static structure. Here's our um, Goldcrest Valley Farm home. 
just kind of sitting here. Very nice. Uh, this is where, you remember this is where the, uh, where it goes down in the ground. So here's a field 80, 85. Oh, this is another grass field. Look at that. We've got another grass field that we own here. Alrighty. So let's uh, get on in here to town. There's a couple cell points in town. This is where our vehicle shop is. So if we uh, if we don't reset back to the farm. Uh, we got quite a bit of drive for us to to get back to the uh, to the farm here at the garden center. We have another egg cell point. Uh, this appears to be a cell point. Also, right here. All right. We have a nice train station across the street there. Whoa. What? Where are you going, buddy? Oh, that's a road. He clearly just turned right into me. This AI traffic. Seriously. Alright, let's go check out Nordzucker. We didn't even check out Nordzucker. Uh, there's a fuel cell point we need to look at, look for. Alright, that was the co-op that we went through. That's the garden. Alright, so the garden and the fuel cell point. Let's go back here. So there's our fuel cell point right here on the side. And this looks like... Uh, Looks like they buy manure here at the garden center. All right, so here we've got a fenced area. Here we have a road. All right, and we want to go. Now we want to go this way to get to Nord Zucker, right? Right. All right, so. This, we saw this on the um, train ride. This is our Nord Zucker, our basically our sugar beet sugar factory. Uh, and this has been, we've seen this on, or I've seen this on other maps. And uh, typically, this is just a dump point. There's kind of, um, we'll get out and we'll look. Typically, there's uh, there you've got a conveyor of sugar beets there. There's a conveyor of sugar beets over here, and uh, typically right in the middle. You can't really see it, but there's just you know concrete to uh, to drive through. But on uh, on this map, he's put in a uh, a tip ramp right here to tip into. So that's the uh, nugget. So that's the uh, Nord Zucker. That's your sugar beet factory. All right. Now let's see where we need to go. All right. Let's get back up on the main road there and uh, make our way up to the animal buy point. And then we'll get to the spinnery and the bakery and the Germantown biogas. And that will be our map um, tour. All right. And we'll turn on the road. And we'll um, get rid of our map so we can see a little bit better. And uh, we'll just uh, take a look at the scenery and try not to drive into any traffic. Really nice countryside. 
really love the trees. Um, you know, the way the trees are just planted. I like how we've got that row of trees there. Pretty, pretty much probably dividing a, a set of fields. The way the roads go, it's very believable. Uh, we want to go this way, right? Let's see. Yep, this is the way we want to go. Um, you know, the roads just... If this isn't um, laid out to, to emulate someplace in real life, then the guy that made this map, um, he might as well become a... Uh, what is that? What do you call those... Um, civil engineer might as well become a civil engineer and basically become a, uh, a town planner and kind of plan out uh, towns and uh, the surrounding area because the way the land lays the way the roads lay the way the fields lay uh, it's all very believable Alright, so we're going to come up here to our animal buy point and a fuel sell point. Okay. Here, I believe, is our animal buy point. Just turn in here. So, what we've got here is an interesting amalgam of structures. We have our stock Emerson Livestock Market from Farm Sim 17, uh, complete with the giant bull somewhere, wherever he's at. Then we've got this big structure, uh, which we, you know, is our big um, storage barn. It feels like it's been um, made a bit bigger, and uh, but you'll see. Right there, you can see through. Uh, basically, two of these barns have been put together. All right, to make this long building. And then on this side, what? Okay, you can't get in. So there's there's no way into this thing. And this is actually the the buy point for your animals. This structure right here. Uh, where these loading docks are. So he took the Farm Sim 17 default animal area, uh, default animal building, um, and just stuck it here, uh, made this interesting thing here with a couple sheds, and then this structure, more modern looking um, structure, is actually where the animal point is. So I thought that was really neat. I thought it was a nice idea to um, to not just reuse the Farm Sim 17 building with the triggers where they normally are, um, but to basically move things around. So, for what it's worth, if you like it, it's cool. If you don't think it's that big of a deal, then, then I'm just making a big deal out of nothing. So here we have our fuel point. Uh, to fill up our fuel bowser if we need to. And let's go on up here and check out what this uh, cell point is. Right, so here we have another cell point. This is just your standard, there's a nugget. Here's your standard um, Farm Sim 17 kind of a warehouse building where you really don't like these. Those things are way too, uh, way too steep. Uh, they're just terrible for anything other than a tractor and a tipper. Any type of a semi-trailer you're going to belly drag. Let's uh, make our way around here. So it looks like we have another flat area here 
for placeable buildings. A couple ancillary support buildings just here for decoration. And a little storage area there. Okay. And now we need to go north on this road. So Hanford, Hanford is where we have our spinnery and something else. All right, so let's see here. What is, is it behind, back here? Where is this it? Oh, this is it. I wonder what this is. Let's check in the map. Oh, so that's the bakery. And the spinnery must be uh, back that way. Let's, uh... Whoa. Not seen too many big issues with this map. This is the first obvious um, oops a daisy that I saw. These are clearly floating in plain air. Plain air. But it's uh, it's interesting how this whole little stretch of road is like that. It's as if maybe these were put in at some point in time, and then the the road level was dropped. Where's our spinnery? Oh, there it is. There's our wool cell point right there. All right, so now all we got to do is get up here to the Germantown biogas. And we'll call this map done. Oh, we have another farm up here. We have another silo system and another BGA. Not BGA, but silage bunker. Oh, that's because this is our pig area. So that's the... Uh, we've already seen that. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and start wrapping up. There's our... There's the biogas area up there. So let's go ahead and start wrapping up. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you like this video and you're not a subscriber, please consider clicking the subscribe button. Uh, if you are do like this video and you haven't clicked the like button, please go ahead and do that. That will help uh, with the uh, search results. It will help with uh, listings and uh, getting this map or this video to be displayed uh, when people just generally search farm sim stuff. Uh, if you haven't already, please go ahead and check out some of the links in my description. Uh, there are several YouTube um, producers of content in my description. Uh, they all produce various various types of farm sim content, and uh, they all have different play styles. Uh, so you're sure to like, sure to find something that you enjoy uh, if you're looking for something. So this this particular uh, biogas simply buys uh, um, slurry. That's all they do here. Um, so this isn't a second biogas plant where you can make silage and do money off of silage. All they do is buy slurry here. So as I was saying, um, give a look at, give a check at some of the guys in the, uh, in my description. Also, if you're looking for a overly friendly, wonderful, wonderful site to visit, uh, wonderful sim community to join, I encourage you to check out PCSG. Uh, there's a link to them in my description. Uh, they are a wonderful group of individuals uh, that are into farm sim, truck sim, train sim, and flight sim. Uh, we have several uh, 
wonderful mods hosted up there. Uh, we are hosting all of Stevie's mods. Uh, so if you want to give one of Stevie's maps a try, uh, you can feel confident and safe uh, that you can download his maps from PCSG without any issue of uh, possibly getting pop-ups or, or other not-so-desirables as a result of, of wanting to do that download. Uh, we also have some other map authors there that are hosting files there, so it's a wonderful place to go check out for mods. And then also I'd like for you to check out the Three Dudes Gaming Network. Um, all of the links in my description for the YouTube guys are members of the Three Dudes Gaming Network. Uh, so I encourage you to go out there and uh, check them out. So until next time, happy farming, y'all.